to the All or Not Better podcast with me, Adam, the Leeds fan. Hope everyone's doing okay. Uh, I'm joined tonight by our regulars. We've got Gilly, we've got Carl, and we've got Jay. How are we doing, boys? All right? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Pretty good, thanks. Getting yeah, harassed by a tiny kitten currently, if you can hear that, but other than that, not bad. <laughs> there we are. Time, the world, yeah. world's a better place, isn't it, after a lead three point? It is. Yeah, it is. Definitely. Feeling a lot better on this one than the last one. I'll tell you that much. Oh. Yeah, have it. It's... Well, that's it, though, isn't it? But how, how many of us um, uh, did we see that coming? Like, and then uh, for me, I, I know that I. I messed up royally. I didn't see this coming. So that ties us in with the predictions, Gilly. Like, how, how many of us <laughs> bottled it, and how many <laughs> of us fucked it up? So, um, I mean, do, 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 we'll we'll go up up the. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll start bad, and we'll we'll end on a positive then, eh? Um, so Rex ended up on a minus five. You're okay, back to two one cents. <laughs> but yeah, you 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 are the uh, um, wankers Wotton of the week. Uh, you went 3 1 Saints. Although I will say, well done on being honest because I'd captured it as a 3 1 Leeds. Uh, so well done on that. Um, so the two Thank of you, you ended up on minus five. I got nothing because I went for the draw. I, 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 and really, being really honest about it, when I go for a draw, it, it, I just can't back the opposition. It means I think we're going to get beat. Um, <laughs> and then, so we had Carl, we had Bren, we had Render, we had Becky, we had Smarty, we had Nitch, we had Dobbo, and we had Ash all on one point. We all went for a Leeds win, but mostly on a 2-1. Uh, Jay took himself three points home by going with the uh, the usual Jay score of a 4-1, so he got the right margin. Um, and Mez, Mez, Mez was spot on. Bang on the money, 3-0. No problem. Five not even here to gloat. Oh, not even here to gloat because he's not well tonight. He will be gutted. But, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that puts him actually right in the running. So if we look at the... Uh, the table, I, I did release a, a bit of a graphic last night that you might have seen, but Becky is still in front by one point ahead of Ash and Smarty with me, uh, Jay and Bren, um, two points off the pace. Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I feel like people are letting me down with their predictions. <laughs> um, you might have to start making your own, Carl. Look, if I get drunk enough, I will, but I don't think I will. So, um yeah, the, the rest of the group need to up their game, like in a bit more positivity, <laughs> and get me up that table. Like, note to self: get a prediction from Carl on Barandi and Coke next time. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, you might, you might have got one out <laughs> of me last night. I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Mad though. What? What? So then, like, obviously we've got a mixed bag then with, with predictions. What? What were your thoughts on on game last night, Jay? I'll come to you first because. I thought what. first forty-five minutes were wank, but what what are you saying? I I I don't know if I'd say wank, but it wasn't the best game in the world, were it? The first forty-five minutes. I mean, I would just sat there fucking pissing around, messing with my phone on Skybet and shit like that. And I just I wasn't enthralled by the game. I was sort of watching it in my peripheries because I got to a point where I was just getting bored, and I was just like, "This is shit. This leads. Come on." Um, but it did feel very much like another one of those games, which a lot of ours do, uh, where it's going to be the first person to score that sort of goes on and takes this game, I think. And it feels like that quite often with our matches at the minute because we so like we play so on the edge and the opposition always get these chances and there's many, many times when people should be scoring against us and if they do, you, you just worry that there'll be another one to follow quickly because we won't change how we play. We'll just continue to keep trying to bang it forward. Um, that's a worry for me in most of our games. But we managed to hold out last night. We got a bit of luck, a bit of uh, good fortune, I think. The ref sort of did the right thing a couple of times. But I, I did feel a, a little bit sorry for him about that free kick. You know, but as we said on in off the bar, um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I just, <laughs> I just know, mean in a sort of devil's it. advocate way. If it had happened to us, I'd be fuming. Do you know what I mean? But like as Jimmy told us on in off the bar, you know, referee was completely right there. He, he'd not let them take that free kick, so that's that's their own fault. Um, I'm sure, you know, they're still moaning about it today. But tough shit. For once, we got that's the luck, it. and uh, second that's half, it. I think we came on a lot. Um, we grew into the game. I mean, there were a period where we started to let them back into it a bit, but overall, I'd say we were the better team. I'd say that we did get a bit of luck, 
But, you know, when you've got Rafinha out there and he's doing bits like that, you know, when you've got Bamford once not getting pulled up for offside, you can't go wrong, can you? And Dallas out <laughs> of nowhere, Stuart Dallas, the Stone Cold Steve what? Austin of Leeds United, just comes I, in, kicks boy. ass, puts one away, deals I, with it, takes it by scruff at neck when it's needed. Love him. Leeds born and bred. <laughs> yeah. I say, I, I, I'd like, like to, you know, put uh, my Go flag on. in the ground there for Stuart Dallas and uh, player of the season, if I'm being honest. Mm. Yeah, He's one of them players that probably won't get it because they're uh, more glamorous players at the forefront. But I'll tell you something. I, I don't think we'd have achieved half what we have without Stuart Dallas in that squad. I'll yeah, tell you that right now. I agree with that. But I, 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 will, I will set my stall out, and I'm not saying that this is my vote for it. I'll set my mm. stall out and say I would oh, put good go. money on Rafina winning it this season. I thought you were going to say Cooper then. No, I think Cooper's <laughs> been one of the better players, but I genuinely <laughs> think because Rafinha is so sexy with what he does, he takes the piss and he's assisting, he's, he's dynamic, he looks great on the ball. That's eye catching. And yeah. um, and with Jon Dallas, uh, I do think Cooper's having a, a, a fine season. And with Jon Dallas, but I genuinely think that Rafinha will win it regardless of what happens. Although, having said yeah. that, Bamford looks like he's going to be on course to exceed 20 goals. And that's amazing. Yeah, that'd be amazing, wouldn't that'd it? That'd be lovely, man. I'd be so Fucking happy for the chap. Like... I would too. And I've slagged him off in the past, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, Fuck. I'll hold my hands up and say, fair play. Because yeah, yeah. he, must, he must put the effort in on the training ground. Bielsa loves him. And, you know, he, he's proper leads, is Bamford. I'm trying to really, it, really right? like the guy. Yeah. I think yeah, he, towards he, the end of last season, before there was no crowds, you could see him using the crowds as as motivation. Because, he, he mm. like, whenever he'd score, he was proper shithousing it down at Luton, <laughs> where he, yeah. he absolutely yeah. took the piss it's, out it's of the Luton fans. Of that kid, and, like, swearing at him. Yeah, yeah, it's proper yeah. come out of his shell now, hasn't it? Yeah, and I think that's that's when you say he's Leeds now, you know, that that's the shithousing type of player we want. Like, he's seen <laughs> click get the admiration, he's like, I'll fancy a bit of that. That's Pass right, a bit yeah. of that. That's it, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Um, he's, he's definitely been, he's definitely been a turnaround player any of this season. I think, mm. he, yes. uh, of all the if, if we look at the squad, you know, from last season, of all the players that I think. I really wanted to prove themselves. Bamford was the one I really wanted him to do to do well. I didn't think he'd do as well as he has done, and and you know what a, what a season he's having. Um, yeah. what, what do you reckon? Is he is he essentially him and Calvi <clears throat> going to Euros? Gilly, what are you thinking? Um, I think I think you're issuing for Kane. Hundred percent. Kane starts every game he's fit for. for England. Does hundred percent. Um, I think really you come down to whether you want something slightly different or if you want somebody that's close, as close to being Kane as we've got. And if it's as close to being Kane as we've got, you probably go Calvert-Lewin. And if you want something a bit different, yeah. you probably go Bamford. I saw, yeah, I saw someone mention something similar to that as well, Gilly. Yeah, They're, they were saying but that Calvert-Lewin and... <laughs> <laughs> It might have been me. I think I said that on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I did see it on Twitter, so it may have, may, may have been you talking sense on Twitter at one point there. Um, yeah. Unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah, no, you're definitely right. They are very similar. And I think if you do want something different, Bamford would be the, the striker you'd nearly go to. I think even Danny Ings is quite similar, the way he plays to the two boys as well, you know. Um, and did I think, yeah, Bamford, come on, though, did he? Well, it's an interesting one. I, I was one. shocked I mean, to see him yeah. and Minamino on the bench. Absolutely. Mm. That, I, I was just about to mention. I mean, what. Uh, so that, most that, of their fans, by all accounts. Well, that's their two most effective forward players. Yeah. Well, judging by the game, the, the last day as well. It, it's yeah. like us putting a lineup out and not having Bamford and Rafinha in it. Yeah. <laughs> For no good reason <laughs> at all. You know what I mean? We'd be like, what's he doing? <laughs> we're, we're like that yeah. most of the time until Calvin comes back anyway so that's... Yeah, when we see who's playing in uh, defensive mid yeah, yeah, yeah that's what's it. going on get a couple of defensive mid that's what we need yeah I'm, I'm on board with quickly. Adam I'm going to just say it quickly yeah. um, just going back very briefly to what Gilly said about Rafinha I don't think there's another player who's signed for anybody else in the Premier League this season that's made more of an impact on his club Agreed. Mm. I think he's the best signing. I, I, I think he's like, certainly 
What's your man for yeah, West Ham? Impact wise, so- Soychek is it for West Ham? He's he's been a revelation yeah, for I them, like. I but to- two two totally different positions as well, though. So, in relation to position wise, they're probably in their positions the two best signings in the Premier League. Absolutely. Yeah. So like. I'm- just and boys, as I'm as as I'm the host tonight, can I just say it's half in you, not half in you? Okay, okay. I've got that on the on the on good authority. So uh, inside info. Yeah. Right, okay. There you go. Um, so we, we, listen, or to uh, know better, be dropping the knowledge on a regular basis. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, we, <laughs> we, listen, we speak Portuguese. We we do language on this pod. Um, <laughs> we don't talk. We just, we don't we don't just talk shit or shit or whatever it is. <laughs> um, so uh, we we've got a poll going. Um, no, we aren't. Smarty's fucked up. We did we we did, we didn't have a poll. Going. Smarty fucked you know, up. We were supposed to have a poll going. <laughs> Smart. As eh? regular viewers and listeners will know, and be very disappointed that they've not had a chance to take part this week. So mm. that's on Smarty. Unbelievable. <laughs> we'll, we'll forgive him. We'll forgive Can't him. Get stuff. So, I'll tell you what we'll do. How about we're on 35 points now, boys? Enough? If we lose every game, are we safe? What like do we need five more points? Do we, do we want to get to 40 to make sure we're tenth in league? What are we saying, Carl? Like, are you are you, are you sitting comfortably basically, mate? You the tenth in league. Yeah. Surely even Leeds can't fuck this up. <laughs> their famous, their famous last words that uh, will put the shit up every Leeds fan, you know, and they uh, they will tag the shit out of you when. Like, if <laughs> don't say when, Carl. I don't want to say when. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, it, I nearly slipped there. I'm more, Jesus more. Uh, anyway, I won't get into it. Right. Um, <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, I think we're. I think another. I think even two more draw, two draws, and we're okay. Like they, they, yeah. they, it was a good thing put up today as well. I'm not sure if you said it or not, Gilly. I, I, <laughs> I see so much shit. Um, he's talking Gilly today. Carl. Yeah, that's why he's got all his material for tonight. He's just been reading Gilly's Twitter. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just ripping Gilly off. That's it, man. Um, no, I saw uh, someone say that uh, a team has never been relegated after winning 11 games in a season from the Premier League. Oh, we, no, oh, that wasn't you. So right, no, well, that's, that's original content. That Carl, you can take credit for that one. <laughs> right, yeah, so I don't, I don't know if I want that fucking credit, but we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, so apparently that's that's the case, man. No one, uh, no team has has been relegated after getting statements wins that can come back there. to haunt you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can, can I just can I just draw your mind back to Christmas 2019 when no side has ever avoided promotion, <laughs> having been I top actually, of the league. I actually Christmas. mentioned that to him earlier when we chatted about this. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> yeah, there, there and you brought that, it up uh, again. Proper leads that I didn't bring that up. You brought that up. I was trying to be positive. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gilly, what are you saying? Do you do you think? Uh, Honestly, we're on thirty-five. We're safe. On. We, we, We've we done it. We're safe. Yeah. Not not yeah. not only do I think that it's impossible that we go the rest of this season without earning any points. Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's entirely improbable that we go the rest of the season without even one win. And one win puts us on thirty-eight points. Thirty-five was safe for Villa last season, even though they didn't deserve it and they should be fucking relegated. Um, (laughs) uh, But 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 it's it's not just the amount of points that we're on. It's also the dross that are underneath us. You look at the table, and Sheffield United are really, really poor, and we have to play them again. Uh, Fulham uh, uh, are quite poor, and we have to play them again. Um, West Brom are really poor. They're they're down with Sheffield United, I would think. Um, Can't wait to see Big Sam get his first relegation. Yeah, oh, he'll yeah. leave he'll before end of the season. We yeah. said, of course he will. Of course he will. He'll 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 put your money on it. Um, record tarnished. No, bear bear in mind our, our our relegation rivals, Brighton. Don't forget those ones. <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> no. they're down there. Uh, Newcastle have got one, maybe two players. Uh, that's not enough. You know, um, this, 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 on there, fuck Bur- Burnley, a, a, a shocking. So you know, the, the, the sides and and actually Southampton, I think, are on the worst run of any club. Yeah, uh, they are. I, I think that I think they're rock bottom of the uh, the form table. So do you know, he, he, you know, it's not even just our points tally; it's also how shit the the sides below us are doing. They're not going to overhaul us, regardless of what we do from here on. 
Do you think that we were lucky then, Bodge? Because the championship last season was probably the weakest it had been in terms of teams coming down from the Premiership into the championship. And we've come into a pretty, as you, as you said earlier there, there's, there's seven or eight teams that are proper dog shit, aren't they, in this, in this league? So do you think that we're kind of where we, we deserve to be? Do we, do we, is it, I said at the start of the season, we'll finish top seven. Um, but I'd be happy with 12. So I think there's seven worse teams in that league than Leeds. Do you, do you, do you boys think that's, that's how it is and, and we're seeing that and the cream's going to the top or, you no. know, what, what's your thoughts on that? <laughs> Ultimately, I am diametrically opposed to your thinking. I think the championship last season was strong. We were just stronger. Um, and I think the Premier League this season, although there is, there is a gulf, and, and there, there genuinely is a gulf. That gulf is between the top six or seven spending sides and the rest. Um, and when I say that is um, you've got really, really shit teams um, that are really doing badly. But, you know, when you look at Sheffield United, they did really well last season. Now, they're, they're, they're in their second season. If you look at what Ipswich did and you know, the patterns that sides have had in the past when they've done really well and then they've overachieved and then the, the following season, overlapping fullbacks, oh, sorry, overlapping centre-backs are no longer doing it for you because people know exactly what to expect of your team and you've not invested in the squad. You know, th- those sides are dropping away. I think Fulham, if they had somebody that didn't wear, wear a, a bladigan and uh, actually knew something about being a coach and a manager, would be uh, uh, you know, maybe not safe. You know, not where we are, but you know, would be better. I, I, I think the championship last season was strong. We just creamed them because we were that much better. But that, we were that much so better too. because we had a genuinely class coach. Coaching is is really important in football. Very man for man, Fulham had a stronger squad than us last season. Absolutely, I'm I think so. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, but like that's yeah. been the case even this year. Everyone, every, like even the bottom three or four clubs. Have stronger squads than us. Mm. Well, we're They're basically just... playing games with championship yeah, players right. plus Rafinha, yeah. aren't we? Well, All right, like... we had Laurenti last night, but you know, still ten championship players. Come on, we deserve at least one more star player to be able to be fit. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we, we deserve at least that. It's not how it works at Leeds. You have to buy four just so you have at least two to use. Because <laughs> Bales is going to kill them with murder ball. Yeah. Well, we we're talking about this. So we're so we're on thirty five points. Next six mm. games are looking. I, I, I we got we've got Villa on Saturday. Yeah. Um, Villa without Ham. Grealish, by the way. I think I, I yeah. think he's so, confirmed. So yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. yeah. So we're on um, that one. I think West Ham away. We don't win in London, obviously. Chelsea yeah. at home. We should spat. You know we. What do we do? It's a different manager now at Chelsea. It's two shell in it, so we'll see. And then Fulham, Sheffield United, and Man City. That's six games, eighteen points on offer. We need three or four to stay up. Would you like what? What we saying? Surely we've got to get six or seven points from them six games, Jay. What are you saying? Uh, so I think um, Villa at home. We really need to be winning that game. Um, Partly because I think they're fucking assholes and I hate them. Um, <laughs> partly because I think out of that lineup, they're one of the weaker sides. And um, as we said before, we don't win in London and there's a few London fixtures in there. So three points against Villa would do nicely. Um, West Ham, I think, is going to be tough. I think the, they're absolutely flying. They're doing well. Um, they're a little bit inconsistent, so you never know. But I think they'll be strong. Chelsea got a bit of a resurgence going on now. They've got an actual coach. Um not just some kid sewing badges that he's got off eBay onto his jacket. Um, Fulham, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird one that I feel like we should beat Fulham, but they're on a bit of a run, aren't they? And I think that Fulham are probably going to replace Newcastle at the bottom. I, I think they're going to get out of it, mate. I think they've just got too much momentum now. And Newcastle have got, obviously, obviously negative momentum going the other way. So um, can we halt that? We should be able to. We're a better team, will we? Who knows? Um, Sheffield United, yeah. Sheffield United, I'd really like to consign them to the dustbin. So I'd like to hammer them thoroughly. I'd enjoy that. Uh, City, 
don't expect much from that. Not not the way they're playing now. I think it'll be a very different game to when we played them start of the season. I think they're absolutely flying. I think they're going to win Premier League and the Champions League the way they're going. To be honest with you, yeah, they're, so, they're looking good, are they? Carl, what are you saying there? That's um, uh, I'd, I'd go as far as to say it'd be typical for City to win the Champions League when there's no fans in the stadium. Isn't it? <laughs> well, not 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 that they get many fans in anyway. Like, but you know. <laughs> Um, they won't notice a lack of atmosphere, will they? This is the thing. Like, I, I, I'm convinced the players think those pl- plastic sheets with the fake crowd on is real because there's no sound <laughs> coming out of them. That shake um, that took over him, it, it watched too much Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. They just yeah. didn't. Nobody, didn't can. Come. Nobody <laughs> can. They were like, you know what? Fuck Still that. dreaming that, lad. Yeah. Um, I think uh, the Villa game, I'm, I'm kind of... I, I definitely want three points there. I want to do the double over Villa. Yeah. Um, I don't hate many teams, but I definitely hate Villa now after the carry on over the last three seasons or you know, and uh <clears throat> West Ham, I, I I think we could beat West Ham, you know. I gen- I know the London Hoodoo and all that kind of thing, but I, I genuinely think we can beat West Ham. They're playing uh similar enough to how we kind of you know, bomb forward, try and hit teams on the break and stuff. So I think they could be that wide open. If we've got Raf on like uh, on fire on that game, I think we could sneak a one nil or a two nil win there. Um, Chelsea, I think a draw. You know, you're optimistic, are you? Yeah, but like to be fair, like Thomas Tuchel has got some. He's got results since he's come in, but he's not. But like that, there's been no performances from Chelsea that would inspire you to go, Jesus, they've turned a the corner there since Lampard yeah. left. It's like yeah. they haven't been yeah. good performances. They've got three points. I think they're there for the taking, but I'd 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 happily be happy with a draw there. Uh Fulham, I think they're hitting a bit of form. And I'd agree with Jay and say that I think they're going to take Newcastle's spot and yeah. stay up. Uh Sheffield United. There was a comment that someone had bookmarked from last year where I saw that today. Someone said, Oh yeah, then fucking nah, 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 let's assign them to the fucking bin and relegate the fuckers at the end of the season and all that. <laughs> that 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 game, that game is fucking karma. So I have it. <laughs> uh so that's three points. And then City, I think, yeah, I think we'd be lucky to keep it under three or four, I think, with City. The way they're playing, yeah. they, I see, can't see them see slowing up. up. They're absolutely so, smashing it at the moment. Yeah. Like they've they've hit form at the right time. I think you're so you're saying that, ten points. We want to we want to hammer Sheffield, don't we? He's going to I think. Yeah. yeah. We don't just want to beat Chile. We want to. Do you, you agree with the boys? Do you. Um, do you yeah, do, I mean, it, it looks like Grealish is going to be out, and without him. Villa are a different proposition. I can't stand him. And, you know, Carl said about hating the, the club. I don't hate the club, actually. I always had a little bit, even though 96 is still a sore point for me. Um, but, you know, e- even though because of that, I don't hate the club. I hate the coach. I hate the coaching yeah. staff. I hate the cheats that they've got in the side. But if you, cut, if you cut all of that away, actually, I wouldn't have an issue with Villa. You know, if, if Dean Smith weren't there and Grealish weren't there and Terry hadn't been involved, I wouldn't have a problem with Villa, really. Villa are, that's proper, I'm... Villa are a proper club that should be in the Premier League with us, in yeah. my opinion. It's just maybe the that's current, what I was the getting current people. Sorry. Yeah. So, the current so, yeah, people I, are assholes. That's right, yeah. So, um, but, you know, we, we, look at, we look at Villa at home and without Grealish, they are a different proposition um, and we should be looking to take the points there. Um West Ham away, you know, they are flying, but actually when you look yep. at the results, so um they've got they got um they've got three points against Spurs. Well, they're struggling at the moment. Um they've got three points against Chef United. Well, they're shit. Um they drew with Fulham at Fulham, who were saying had turned a corner, so you know that they they've hit a little bit of form. They beat Villa. Well, we're saying that we want to be beating Villa, so <laughs> you know, they're not they're not, they're not, you know, they got beat off Liverpool. They beat Palace. We beat Palace. Um, they beat West Brom by one goal. West Brom are shocking. Oh, God. Um, they, beat, they beat Burnley by one goal. Burnley are shocking. You know, they're not, those are the last like seven or eight results. You know, they're not, they're not world beaters, but they are in fourth place. 
Now, that might play into our favour if they hit that game thinking, well, we're going to beat Leeds. Leeds are a mid-table side. We're top four. We're going Champions yeah. League. We're going to go and we're going to beat them. Well, a, a side that's going to do that against us is going to come unstuck. So that, yeah. that might play into our favour. I think Chelsea, I've, I, I hate it, but I've almost kind of written off. I'd take a draw. I would take a draw every day of the week there. Uh, I, I suspect we won't get one. Uh, Fulham away, I think we'll win. Sheffield United at home, I think we'll win. And Man City's on my birthday, and I'm really not holding out hope for three points. <laughs> it'd be lovely. I, 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 I'm saying, I'm saying nine out of the eighteen points. So I, just I one off me, nine. and you, and just, you nearly questioned, off. and you nearly questioned me, my sanity for saying ten. <laughs> uh, well, you were confident about doing Chelsea over, and I'm not. That's the only difference. Oh, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, so I understand. I do agree with you though. West Ham aren't exactly pulling up trees results wise, but they're they're. In, in spots to play well, but yeah. To be fair, they always fall apart at some point, don't they, when they have a promising run West Ham, so you never know. It's, <laughs> it's usually way before this, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they, you know, yeah. they usually do fall away way before this. Well, that's it. So, I mean, obviously, we're talking about six games, you know, six games in, we're talking about West Ham and, and all that, but I suppose we've just got to turn attention to, to Villa this weekend and... Um, you said obviously Grealish is out. Um, Dean Smith is an absolute muppet. Um, <laughs> what, 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 what we, what we thinking? Cause, because obviously I thought in the first game when when Bamford went on his little rampage, I thought we were superb. Um, do, do we set up the same way? Is Dean Smith capable of adapting to, to how we play? Um, you know what are they can be like without Grealish. Like what, 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 what do we think is going to actually happen? Like I, I'm, I'm, I personally think we'll, we'll, we'll come through it. But uh, Carl, what, what do you think, mate? It's going to be a tough game, is it? Yeah. Um. But like, like Gilly and yourself mentioned there, like they're, they're not very. They're not. There's not a lot about them when it comes to being without Grealish. Um. And I, I think it's quite similar, like the same thing happened last year when they lost McGinn to that knee injury. They completely fell apart. And uh, I think it's the same with Grealish. If they have one without the other, I don't think they, they click in midfield. Like there's this big hullabaloo about Barkley and uh, Grealish, you know, combining really well to, to you know, drag them through the, the season or whatever. But without McGinn Back playing in failure. that... <laughs> it was a late. Yeah, I was playing in the wrong position by fucking Warnock, wasn't he? But anyway, um, there was no yeah, better so than I, Michael Tom. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I, I think uh, without without McGinn <laughs> or without Grealish, I think Villa are they're, they're not the prospect people make them out to be. I think they both have to be in that team for them to click. They. Like it's not a Bartley and, and Grealish thing; it's a McGinn and Grealish thing. I think really, because like last year when McGinn was out, bleeding Grealish, yeah, he was there, but sure, he was doing twice the work because he had to cover. You know, I don't know who plays in there instead of the Mel Gazi or someone like that, but like they, he's cover, he was covering twice the ground, and they weren't scoring goals, and they were conceding goals, and and they they were lucky to be in the Premier League. Let's be honest, this year, like. Very yeah. lucky. They're they're up on a technicality. Well, and that's it. Yeah, um, exactly. wrong, it? yeah, yeah. Well, the goal line technology more so than VAR, but it was ridiculous how they weren't allowed to use VAR to investigate it. Like that's that's just ridiculous. But yeah, I think you know, I think we we, we will you know do all right on on the the Saturday against Villa. I think uh, if Grealish is out, um, it's. Let's be honest, it's probably not going to make much of a difference because Phillips is out as well. Like, so we're we're filling gaps as well. Do we know when he's back yet? But yeah. It's hard to tell, like that we well, didn't Calvin. find out whether it was injury or uh, yeah. morning Granny Val. We just it's it's well, not a question you can ask. You can only I think they said um on Radio Leeds before the Saints game, because I caught a bit of that. Pope, he said that they'd said to him um, two to four weeks. It's been two now, so right. it could be another two, but we don't know really. But, but this is this is a this is a, a point that I that I actually want to raise. Um, 
Aston Villa. Um, obviously got Grealish and he's their their talisman. He's the he's the main player. The same that leaves we out the same team about Calvin. And mm. so are, are are both of us, Villa and Leeds, are we just one man teams? Can you know we showed against Southampton in my opinion that we can adapt and we will still win. Can Villa do the same? You know, do we rely on Calvin too much? Do Villa rely on Grealish too much? Gilly, what 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 are your thoughts on that, right? Um, I think you know when we talked about the signings that we we expect the club to make or we hope the club will make, we've talked about having a, a central midfielder coming in that can fill in for Calvin as well as a left back is what we've identified in the past. We 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 all want an eight but we all want somebody that can come in and do that deeper role as well. Now, you know, Lorente and Cock have both been touted as, as potential people that could do that. If the other ones at centre back with, with Cooper um, or strike, and um, you know, we've also got <laughs> somebody else on the books that, that remains nameless because it's been that long since we've seen him. Um, but you've still got his tribute beard. Um, yeah. So, you know, we're in a position where I, I, yeah, I don't think you can come off the back of a three nil win and say we're a one man team when we didn't have that man in the side. Uh, but but it has to be understood just how much he influences our play. Um, mm. You know, we're in a position. It kind of do, almost does that. It's been referred to before as a quarterback role, hasn't it? That 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 deep lying yeah. playmaking role. Um, that that you know he he picks passes. He regularly exceeds ninety percent pass completion rates, regardless of the distance of the passing that he's covering. And you know, it's unusual to find somebody that's strong in a tackle reads the game well enough to break it up without having to tackle, makes the interceptions, and is capable of doing the short and long passing game, you don't find that very often. So, of course, it's going to affect us. You can't get away from that. Of course, it's not having him is going to affect us. But I, I think it's good that we have actually cover coming back in now that can that can do it, like in Urenta, like he, he did. Like It took him a few minutes to get into the game last night, but when he did, he was... Solid enough now, and I was happy enough that Struick was at centre back because he had a good game as well. Like so, we have better cover, I think, in that position than we did before Urenta came back from injury. I think. But, yeah, no, that's, that's fair enough, boys. I think um, I think from 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 for me, Villa are going to find out the the wrong way that they can't rely on one player too much. Um, and their squad isn't, they've, they've not got a player that can come in and replicate what Grealish does. Um, Leeds, we're, we're in a position where, yet we, we don't have a quarterback, in, you know, a quarterback player like, like Calvin, but we do have a very well oiled unit where we will still keep the same philosophy of play. We don't change the way that we play because. We don't, you know, we don't change the way that we play because Calvin's not there. Whereas Villa will change the way they play because Grealish isn't isn't there. In my opinion, I think that's why we're we're, we're plucking stuff on my this weekend. <laughs> but that's just my that's just, that's just my prediction. So, uh, talking of which, what like what what are you saying, um, Jay? Predictions oh. this weekend. Obviously, I'm going four-one leads because you know <laughs> yeah. it's got to happen at some point, hasn't it? It's got to happen. So let's have some of that. Could be this weekend. Could be against West Ham. Could be. Hey, uh, it could, could be. Could be against it. Chelsea. It could be a shocker. Imagine if we stuffed Chelsea four-one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> we've wow. had one time for that. I think we try to get a new. Don't manager. tease me like that. Oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sweetheart. <laughs> well then right, we'll go with predictions so Jay you're obviously going with your form one uh, Carl are you, are you going to be you going to man up no Come no on. no no. told you if you got me <laughs> drunk and I was on a variety and coke or something like that I'd, I'd possibly be egged into it like but no no okay right, Gilly what are you saying uh, I, I'm I'm going 3-1 lead nice. okay yeah, and I, and I think it'll be. I, I don't think that'll be us scoring one or two late on to make it safe. I think we'll be safe start to finish. I think I think it'll be quite an easy day at the races for us. Like on a personal note, skill. I just want to stuff them because I am sick to death of Villa fans on Twitter trying to make out that Dean Smith is some kind <laughs> of revolutionary manager that yeah. is either up there or better than Marcelo Bielsa. 
And I, I'm sick of it, man. I'm sick of it. You were kept up by a faulty piece of technology. Oh, Keegan. You spent a shitload of money. <laughs> I love it. I would you love know. it. I, I, I would love it if we beat them because they're <laughs> assholes and they need to learn a lesson. And, and, and I'm mad at them, yeah? Okay. Um, <laughs> listen. Angry listen, Jay and mad at them. Adam, I'm telling you what. Craig, we, all know what, we all know what you can get like when, when you've had a couple and you're on the rant, so I don't want to hear that from you. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think, I, you know what, I, I take a 2-0, mate. I'll take a 2-0 win, um, and I want us to get two early goals, be, be two up in 20 minutes, and then just fucking bore, bore them to death. You know it doesn't like that. I know. And them running know. around like headless chickens. I know, but I, that's what I want. That's all I want. It's just two each, Jesus, two early goals. Minutes. Fuck about. Um, but yeah, ain't, ain't going to work like that, is it? No, no we, so uh, we're two nil up in, in, in 20 minutes. It'll either finish 3 2 to them or 5 2 to us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> thing, it? there's, there's no that's what I mean. <laughs> no, there's, there's no in between, <laughs> is there? Um, what, um, what I will say, though, is. is Villa, their keeper Martinez. We were looking at him, weren't we? In in pre mm. in pre season, and he's been an absolute revelation. I think this season, and mm. you know, as as much as we, you know, Melier is for the future. Have we missed a trick by by not going in for Martinez and Villa? Have they picked up a really good bargain there, or have we? You know, have we done the right thing by giving Melier the, um, the, the 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 first team exposure? Carl, what you know, you've coached as well. Uh, like, what what do you think? Like, should we have gone in for Martinez or? I think it it was thirty million pound price tag. I think that put us off, didn't it? I, 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 I don't was know. It, I what think I, 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 he went he went for quite a lump of money. I think that's maybe what put us off. Um, I personally, I'd I'd have had him. I'd have brought him in. He is good competition. I don't think he'd have come here to sit on the bench, though. No. Because I think with the way Bielsa is with players that, let's be honest, he's, he's loyal to players. You know, if they, they do a good job for him, he'll, you know, look after them. But I don't think, he, like he was leaving Arsenal to get first-team football and to come to Leeds and not get first-team football. I think it was just... It wouldn't have been a good move from like so he's at Villa and they're reaping the benefits of a top class keeper who apparently can do a a Carlo Cudicini and declare for England. He's been in the country that long and really? not yeah and not uh, wow. not played an international game for Argentina, so he could potentially be an England keeper in the making if he fancied it. No, well, they, I, you know why not? Like well, Pickford's so, wank, isn't he? So might as well. Uh, well, I've, I've just had a look. Well, I've just had a look at the fee. So Sky Sports at the time were reporting a 16 potentially rising to 20. Okay. Now, 16 is probably a good deal for him. But 20, yeah. it's pro- you know, if you think, um, if we signed him, we might have had to do without Rafinha. I'm not signing him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, See, that, that, that could have been their thinking as well, yeah. 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 Well, that's it. You've got, you've got to work within the constraints, but... But I, I think um, I think Martinez is a is a is a solid keeper, and um, mm. but I'm so I'm so glad. Um, I you know we touched on on Melly and his potential, um, and, and we've all spoken about the the under twenty threes and and young players and getting that first team exposure, and we're seeing that with Melly out with that he's 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 in the big boy league. He's not fucking about playing in development leagues. He's actually going to come on and, and, and be a, a really, really world-class goalkeeper at some point. Yeah, um, definitely. Well, he's come on leaps and bounds, I think he's still making mistakes, but like you say, he's come out of playing sort of 23s and there he is just thrust into a Premier League first team and he's doing a great job. Yeah. Mm. He's and, making and he... some mistakes that are frustrating. Like he did his trademark, throw off, kick the ball to the opposition again at the Saints game. Um, mm. But it's going to happen. And... If we brought Martinez in, then you'd have this guy in and we might have conceded, what, five or six less goals over the season or something, and we'd have stifled Melier's development. So I, I personally don't think it would have been worth it. And Am, am I right on this, Gilly, that uh, Melier now is the 
first under 21 year old goalkeeper to yep. keep more yep. than eight clean sheets in the Premier League. Is it? Yeah, is it broke, that, it broke your heart's record last night. Yeah. He broke yeah. It, yeah. So, yeah. but nobody's, yeah. nobody's talking about that because Leeds are too attacking. But, you know, mm. we've got a goalkeeper who, who's broken an England international goalkeeper's record. I think, um, I think that's, that's amazing. So, yeah, it is, and, and I think, you know, we, we, talk, we, we, we talk about timings and opportunities. You know, we bring Martinez in, who's 28, 29, um, and he comes yeah. in, his first choice, Melier's back up, and do you know what? That's great. Uh, and maybe in a year or two's time, um, we sell Martinez because we, we're bringing Melier through into, into the first team, what have you. But what you've done there is you, there's a weight of expectation that will come with that based on the fact that we'll be moving out a first-team goalkeeper that's, that's, that has that uh, been a, uh, the first choice on the team sheet, if you bring in somebody to be a first choice. Um, yeah. And you're right, he left Arsenal because he wasn't first choice. So he's not going to go somewhere else to not be. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it, you do that. And then you put a weight of expectation on Melia when you are trying to bring him through. Whereas this season, this is a season of growth. This is the time for him to be able to, especially without fans there, because... With all the best will in the world, Ellen Rod can be intimidating for away away teams, but it can be intimidating for ours as well. We all remember yeah, Billy Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, we'd what, 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 <laughs> what we'd rather not, but we all do. So you know, he's, he's in a position. You know, he, he is breaking records and he is doing well and he is a good shot stopper. Um, and, and you know, he's 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 had some corkers of of uh, appearances, but he's also made some mistakes. But those that, you know, we spoke yeah. early on on the pod that he was going to do that because he's a young man, but he's a young man that's growing and he's coming through and he's getting experience now that'll stand him in good stead mm-hmm. for one, two, three seasons from now, rather than trying to bring him in there when the expectation's already grown that we're going to be looking at top six, we're going to be looking at European yeah. qualification and we can't afford those mistakes. He's doing it now. Before that yeah. weight of expectation yeah. grows and grows. You wait yeah, till we're yeah. actually trying to get into Europe and stuff and we've got that keeper in there and he's he's confident, he's assured, he's got his place because he's played with that team, he's done a season. Yes. Like you say, Gilly, it'll, it'll do us a world of good, it'll do him a world of good. He'll be comfortable in that role and he'll just go from strength to strength. So this is obviously our most um, controversial section of our pod and it is the Hawk topic. So... This week, we are up against Dean Smith. Um, now, the question, as always, to you boys, is would you rather the Hawk or Dean Smith? Carl, what are you saying? Uh, it's going to be fairly short and sweet for me because there's no amount of bleeping that Gilly is going to be able to edit <laughs> in or out. Uh, <laughs> So I, I'm just going to go with uh, the 10 metre swimming badge and the cycling proficiency uh, certificate. And eventually he will take credit for Marcelo Bielsa getting us to Europe. Dave Hockaday. Dave Hockaday. There you go. One vote for Dave. Jay, go on. I, I oh, mate. One, do, mate. Do, do you know, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm keeping myself restrained a little here. I'm just... Dean Smith looks like he should be on a building site, not a fucking dugout. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going with a hock because he can make it on a building site, but he can make it in football. And a PE hock. teaching, literally PE teaching. Listen, that's all yeah. other kettle of fish that, you know. The transfer of through, skills. He's, he's bringing through the future. Yeah. Right. I lost a college hey, or whatever it is. Wouldn't it be weird in about 15 years when Swindon fucking... Win the uh, win the Champions League because of all the players that Hockaday's brought through from Glasgow College. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be Bristol, what if he's down no, Gloucester? It'll be nearer to them. But fuck no, wherever he is, he should stay there. Right, yeah, Gilly. Was, yeah. <laughs> Gilly, the Hawk or Dean Smith? Dean Smith can get fucked. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> you worried me there, Gilly. No, I was worried it, then. I thought, it, fuck it, you know. Do you know, you're looking, it's a clean sweep and it's got to be because I'm going to, I'm just going to end the meeting if, if you don't go that way as well. <laughs> <laughs> Podcast cancelled. Um, <laughs> um, you know, it, 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 when he were playing, it, it, towards the end of his career, he played for Wednesday. I mean, that's never a good thing, is it? You know, um, so, you know, but you look at, you look at his, 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 um, his track record as a manager. 
So he's now at Villa and he's got the worst cheat in the league. Um, and before he was at Brentford and had the worst cheat in the league. Yeah. And then signed the worst cheat in the league from the championship in one <laughs> to the Premier League team to join up with the worst cheat in the Premier League. <laughs> he he coaches players to be worse players but better cheats. Yeah. And em- and employs a despicable human being in John Terry as a coach to a- aid him in making a-, a team the most despicable team in the league. I yeah. I don't hate Villa. I hate those people being at yeah. Villa that should be a side that we can have some respect for and I've got none and I need to stop talking because I hate them <laughs> I'm going to get a proper gilly round finally <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Go on, gilly. Excellent. We, we, I'm we going know, hot got mad, <laughs> we've, I'm we've, going hot we've got gone crazy gilly tonight it's <laughs> <laughs> mad is that um, yeah I, I think for me I just I hate the hawk, and, and he pisses me off that the fact that he's ever mentioned with, with our <laughs> great club. Um, the same but, bread. But it's Dean Smith in it, and he's an absolute arsehole. So um, <laughs> all this, all this, all this forgiven hawk. Um, we, you know, I'll, 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 I'll take it for I'm this week. It. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> going to do hawk this week. What, what a guy! What, what a guy. You know, you can't, around, you, you, you can't just man. say this week because you know it's a scummer next up. Well, I'll tell you something, Gilly. I don't think me, don't think me and Carl be making the same mistake. We'll get asked about fucking Moyes. You know? Yeah. Well, they've got, after we got far. hung out to dry last time. Even well, though well, we were right. I was just going to say, Jay, man, we were, we were proved right. We were proved right. Yeah. You know that Even though he's an ex scummer. So. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the Autonaut Bottle. Or oh, no, better podcast with uh, myself, with Jay, with Carl, and with Gilly. Um, we are um, gonna just fuck off now. But if you, <laughs> if you wanna wanna know any more, if you wanna listen to any more of our content, we've got the In Off the Bar um, podcast that came out today with Jimmy the Ref, um, and I think uh, he did a great job in explaining how Andrea Mariner. Um, did 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 a really really wonderful job last night with the, mm. the decisions he made, uh, and and yeah, but how the fuck did Southampton stay with uh, eleven men on the pitch when Tower was a diving, cheating, horrible bastard all game? <laughs> um, well, that's it. That's it from us. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week after the Villa game when we've got another three points and we are mathematically safe. <laughs> um, Gilly, Carl, Jay. It's been great to see you boys and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you again. What's a pleasure, lads. I'll see you next time. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. See you in a bit.